Good morning, YouTube. All right, it's been a while, but I'm back. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do something really kind of one of those things you can park in your repertoire and pull it out just to be impressive. I forgot to turn off my dishwasher, but I'm still about to show you how to make polenta. I'm gonna make it super delicious, extra cheesy, and so good you cannot wait to have some. All right, let's cook y'all. We got a family to feed. All right, let's make some polenta. Now polenta works really, really similarly to um, grits, okay? It is a grain, it's cornmeal, right? It's just a different grind. I don't think I've ever seen white polenta. Like in the American South, you use white grits or, or yellow grits, depending on the corn you use. We haven't really ever seen yellow polenta. But you can get it in different grinds. Some of it's very, very fine. Some of it's pretty coarse. And it is a ratio, right? So you measure it out in ratios, just like you do with grits. So we're gonna start by heating up our liquid. And to try to make this a little easier on everybody, um, I am measuring for once. <laughs> and I'll tell you, here's the deal. You can use any kind of liquid you like. All right, so you can use broth, you can use white wine, you can use a combination of those. I had about a cup of leftover commercial chicken broth that I needed to use up. And then I had about a half a cup of wine and the rest of our liquid is going to be homemade chicken broth that I made a couple days ago. Let's see how nice it's, ooh, that's making a mess. <laughs> it's from the collagen. We want a total of four and a half cups of liquid. So, oops, sorry about the camera shot. That was terrible. I have my, my pan over here on medium heat. We're gonna bring this up to a boil. So there we go. Total of four and a half cups of liquid. All in. Okay, now, you do want this at a nice rolling boil, but in the meantime, you wanna make sure there's good flavor to it. I know my homemade chicken broth has lots of flavor. Um, canned does not have much at all. I know the white wine, I used to, it's a Chardonnay, it's a cheap, holy crap, you get this. How cheap can you get wine? Well, you can get that cheap. Um, I know that that's got a little bit of acid, it's gonna be a nice roundness. And then I have a handful of fresh thyme. It's, I don't know five or six sprigs. That's gonna go right in there. And to that, we're gonna do a couple things. Lots of fresh black pepper. And I go pretty heavy on the black pepper. You're talking about ground cornmeal. Not a whole lot of flavor there on its own. It does need a boost. And then I've got kosher salt. One with a couple teaspoons of kosher salt. I can't bend backwards. There we go. All in. Okay, so I'm cranking the heat up because that needs to come up to a boil. And there's really nothing magic about polenta. If, if you if you can go back and look at I did a video on how to cook grits. And we talked about the difference between polenta and grits. And basically it's about five dollars a pound. Really, that's all there is to it. it. It's all cornmeal, all ground corn. Okay, so cup and a half of polenta, right? And you wanna know something? I have made polenta with just stone ground yellow cornmeal and nobody ever said a word, including some people that were all like, oh, I know Italian food. I'm like, yeah, right, okay. Because it's the same exact thing. They just put polenta on it and they charge more. All right, so the trick is, actually, let me show you this real quick. Okay, that's it. Nothing special. It's already gotten warm enough that our chicken jello broth, that our homemade chicken broth has melted. Okay. Oh, you know what we can do right now, though? Look here. Give it a taste. Mmm. Yep. All right, taste it. <clears throat> It's not well seasoned now, fix it now. And then you stir and you just keep stirring as you're adding your polenta.
That's it. Now, if you whisk now, all the little grains will hit the liquid individually. And you won't get lumps. How about that for magic? So that's all there is to it, okay? So I'm gonna bring this up to a simmer. I'm gonna, nope, I'm gonna bring it up to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, keep whisking about, I don't know, six or seven minutes. That's almost all there is to this, seriously. A lot easier than people want you to think. All right, so now we have polenta lava. Polenta lava. Oh yeah, I was gonna ask you what, what you have going on. All right, YouTube. Brent is home. <laughs> Woo! Woo! All right, so it'll get to the point where you can no longer use a whisk. You're gonna have to use a wooden spoon or a rubber spatula or something. This is when it starts getting nice and thick. All that corn, that dried corn, has absorbed all that liquid with all those beautiful flavors. Okay, so you're starting to get something really nice here. So that's what it looks like. And I called it polenta lava because, well, wait a minute here, let's see. Can you see the, no, of course, as soon as I moved the camera, the big lava bubble stopped. Move. Yeah. There one, there one. Anyway, anyway, it's gonna be, um, Extremely dangerous at this point, by the way, because when the bubbles come up, when it's that thick, it will throw napalm at you, so be careful. Uh, 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 okay, we're going to finish this off. That's right, back up. Yeah. All right, so we have about half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. You can use the good stuff if you can afford it. Um, Y'all know me by now, I'm cheap. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I just, you know, I was talking to Brent a minute ago, and... That whole single mom mentality, I don't know if I'll ever be able to shake it. But, kept everybody fed, didn't I? All right, so the cheap Parmesan cheese, stir that in, okay? Just like this. You want this nice, beautiful, thick consistency, all right? It's kind of funny. Brent, I don't know if we ever told you growing up, you know, the Brunley Hotel downtown? Uh -huh. We used to walk up there every day or every Sunday after church and have lunch. And they would have, uh, they served, now this was like a white tablecloth restaurant. <laughs> God, I love Appalachian Mountains. They would serve fried cornmeal mush, right? Which people freak out. They're like, oh my God, mush, you ate mush. You know what mush is? That mush is what's in this. This is polenta. It's the exact same thing. Cornmeal mush fed generations of folks in the Appalachian Mountains and generations of poor people in Italy. They just have a sexier name for it. And All right. The smell of it just changed my mind. It's still, it smells incredible, right? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you cool this down, put it in a, a casserole dish, cool it down, chill it, it will solidify. You can then cut it into squares and pan fry it. In Italy, you pan fry it in a little bit of olive oil. In the Appalachian Mountains, you use a little bit of butter, or better yet, bacon fat. Top, <laughs> top that with a little crispy pancetta, or in the south, what are you gonna use? Country ham. You're welcome. I've just created an entire new world for you. <laughs> All right, so this is half a cup of frozen peas. We didn't even worry about defrosting them. See, just throw them in just like that. And you don't really even want to cook them. You want that bright flavor against that rich, creamy polenta. So you're really just stirring that together. All right? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to turn around, grab a plate, show you what this looks really? like. Really? You've never seen polenta? You, when you were little, you did eat mush. You ate fried mush, and I know that for a fact because I made it for you. So, okay. So I've got a little plate over here, and the only thing to look out for is your fresh thyme that was still in there. So, this is how we do this maneuver. It looks pretty. Isn't it pretty? It's very pretty. It was supposed to. You know what? Oh, I don't have that on camera. There we go. I have Kitty on camera, of course. Let's see, the Kitty of the day is Giblet. Hi, Giblet. <laughs> there's, always, there's always a Kitty. It's just whichever one gets to the window first. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and top off our bowl because this is what Brent and I are going to eat for lunch. 
I'm very excited about it. <laughs> and I am going to stop and take a picture of that and let, let YouTube see what it looks like. But uh, I'm trying not to let my face get on camera because I don't have makeup on. Okay, so here is our gorgeous little polenta deliciousness right there. And I'm sneaking a bite out of, over here. <laughs> it's like cheesy, porridgey goodness. <laughs> Man, that is so good. You know what you need to do? You need to get a big pot of braised pot roast done with oregano. I know. Uh. <laughs> do it with, <laughs> with oregano and fennel and serve that pot roast over that. I'm everybody's favorite Italian grandma, and I ain't never been there. <laughs>